Great. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us for this press briefing for Coaches Versus Racism. And we have available this morning the Executive Director of Coaches Versus Racism, Daryl Woods. We also have Coach Juan Howard from University of Michigan, as well as Coach Byron Smith from Prairie View A&M University. And many of you this morning have sent in some questions. If you have not, please raise your hands, hit the hand icon, and I will see you and we'll call on you for questions. We'll open up first with Daryl Woods, again, Executive Director, Coaches Versus Racism, who'll tell us a little bit about the organization. Daryl? Hey, yeah, thanks, Martin, for, for, the, uh, for the intro. Uh, and thanks, everyone, for, for your time and, and uh, joining us today um, and uh, everyone that, uh, that, that's involved. Uh, the first thing I want to do is talk a little bit about what Coaches Versus Racism is and what it's about um, in, in, in brief. Uh, Coaches versus Racism is a, a platform that uh, uh, a, a group of us decided to put together to establish a platform and, and raise awareness, uh, not only for, for coaches, uh, but for student athletes and, and, and the like. Because um, uh, many times, um, as, as we know, pre-George Floyd, post-George Floyd now, uh, sometimes the narratives get thrown to the wayside and, and part of our job at, at CVR is to uh, not let that happen and to create this platform allows us uh, to continue the, the conversation about why some of these topics that we're that we're going to be discussing uh, is important okay um, and you know uh, the reason we chose coaches um, is because you know obviously we know that coaches are great teachers motivators, uh, innovators, uh, role models, um, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, coaches are, are also great uh, uh, messengers, okay? And, and getting those messages uh, out to the masses, you know? Um, and, you know, uh, being leaders, you know, in their community and at their, their uh, universities and institutions, uh, we thought it was a great idea to have coaches help us uh, with this platform that we're given uh, to kind of spread our messaging, okay? Um, so, um, and all in all, you know, CVR, I'll, I'll use CVR instead of Coaches Versus Racism from time to time, will uh, be an organization to provide a platform uh, for us to spread a message of, of what we call SEERS, okay? That's S-E-E-R-S. And basically what Sears is, is systemic racism, uh, uh, equality, uh, equity, uh, reform in all forms of it, uh, you know, and then, you know, social justice or some, some people like to call it social injustice. Um, and then, you know, there's a, a host of topics that obviously are centered around those things. And that's why we have panel discussions uh, for that. We can't get into too much of that on this particular call for just the time constraints. Um, but, and then the third thing would be, you know, what our plan of action would be and why we're doing this. Okay. Um, and that's just a call of action of, of, you know, again, education, awareness, um, and, and things, uh, of, of that nature. Thanks, Daryl. We will now introduce coach Byron Smith, coach Smith. Good morning. And coach, if you could tell us a little bit about why you decided to join Coaches Versus Racism. Yeah, um, you know, we decided to uh, you know, take part, you know, in, in the cause. I mean, obviously it's, a, it's an event, basketball. <clears throat> it gives you a great platform to be able to, um, you know, send out messages and be a messenger as Daryl <clears throat> had said. So obviously with us here, uh, you know, being at an HBCU, you know, we were well aware of, uh, a lot of the um, injustices and things that go on uh, in our society, and obviously with uh, George Floyd, you know, being from you know Houston, Texas, and we're 45 minutes right outside of Houston, uh, you know, we had a, a very close up um, view of what was going on, and uh, you know, followed it uh, very, very closely. So, um, you know, we thought that it would be very good for us to get involved, um, to um, you know, to get out and to try to continue to. 
um, you know, share information and, and um, you know, raise awareness that, that, that we are in, um, you know, a bit of a, at times of, you know, a discriminatory environment. But, uh, you know, nonetheless, basketball is a great game. We, we uh, you know, we see it as coaches and obviously as former players, it's, it's colorblind. Um, you know, it doesn't affect our game, um, you know, within our fraternity nearly as much, but out in society, it, uh, it definitely is a problem. Um, and I think the conversation, uh, you know, should continue, uh, as Daryl said, uh, and we want to be advocates uh, for change and agents for change uh, and to continue to talk about uh, things and how we can make uh, our society better. And obviously, uh, we have, a, like I said, a great platform with the game of basketball. And, um, you know, me as a, as a leader of a program, um, I, I want to, you know, help as much as I possibly can, uh, continue to educate our players. Um, you know about the the, the, the issues that, that that are in front of us. Um, you know, as a society, um, so obviously we want to be as involved as we possibly can. It's a great opportunity uh, for our, our prestigious institution at Prairie View, uh, the oldest uh, institution in the state of Texas. A lot of history there. Um, our people here have seen a lot, uh, but we wanted to uh, you know be a part and be at the forefront uh, of change if we can and. Um, continue to uh, the, you know, continue the conversation and uh, to help out in any way that we can to try to make this society a better place. Thanks, Coach. Coach Howard, same question. Well, well said by uh, Daryl as well as Coach Smith. Um, but just to piggyback on, you know, one of the things that, you know, I find that's, you know, special about sports is, you know, when it comes to sports and especially our team, you know, I give that as an example, you know, we have uh, guys that come from different backgrounds. Uh, we speaking of uh, religious backgrounds as well as ethnic backgrounds. And uh, what I find is, you know, with sports is that when you bring all those together, no one even think about any of that. Uh, they think about, you know, how can we all just become together and to form that brotherhood? And that's what, and that's our why on what we uh, have witnessed uh, in this country is that there's a big divide. And when it was, this opportunity was brought to me as to be a part of it, I thought it was a no brainer. Uh, the you know, University of Michigan has a, obviously a, a big brand, a huge platform. Um, there's a lot of uh, guys that are on this team that I coach that looked at me as the leader that identify and look just like me uh, that wanted to be a part of this event. And I thought that you know, it would be special for us to uh, to really uh, go out and do whatever we can to help uh, the HBCUs. And so, you know, we look at some of the resources that you know, we have that the HBCUs do not have that, you know, I saw that this has be a nice fundraiser too, to help uh, in any way to help uh, uh, with their, uh, any resources that they're lacking that we can help, you know, in any type of way to help raise money for it. So um, we are very happy to be a part of this game. We're looking forward to, you know, the experience, and uh, we also uh, will do where we can to help grow it. Wonderful. Thank you so much. We have a first question from Charles Holman. Charles? Yes, Charles good Holman. morning. There you go. Good morning. Very. Thank you very much. This is for both coaches and also for Daryl. Um, how important is this not only to speak on the issues that you're speaking on, but you're also two Black coaches are are on the on the on the uh, sidelines that are, you know, being leaders to show that blacks can do this. And also, will this game be an annual event similar to uh, coaches versus camps? Daryl, you mute. Daryl. Daryl, you're on mute. Can you take this one? I know. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. Let me take this. Yeah. Let me take this question, please. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so you know, we when we chose the teams, okay, um, we chose the teams, and we we interviewed. You know, originally this was going to be a six and eight team event, um, and you know, we we chose the teams based on the conversations that we that I actually initially had with coaches because I just wanted to get an idea of what their thoughts were and wanted that to be organic, right? I, I don't want to predetermine uh, who to uh, allow to play in an inaugural event. 
Um, and, you know, uh, based on those conversations that I had with Coach Howard and Coach Smith, uh, those were the two that, you know, uh, we decided that made the most sense, okay? Uh, uh, it didn't matter if those coaches were uh, white or black, to be honest with you, okay? Uh, this is not a white or black event, okay? Uh, it's a coaches versus uh, racism and other issues event, okay? Uh, and I know sometimes when it, it, it gets misconstrued when you see the word racism, but that racism word means so many more things, okay? Uh, uh, whether it's, you know, uh, you know, you look at Chinese people have been, you know, racially profiled. You got uh, uh, the lesbian and gay communities being racially profiled. So it, it's, it's a wide range of, of, of topics that we can tackle with this. Uh, and I don't want to make it about a black on black uh, coaches event or anything like that. This is a, a, a world problem. Okay. Uh, but we'll start with our, our nation and at our nation's capital. Uh, the second question uh, I'll answer is, is yes, is we'll, we'll have uh, this an inaugural event, but we'll have more events. We already have uh, slated next year in Vegas. Uh, we'll probably have eight teams. We're also uh, trying to organize one there in, in Houston and then Miami. So uh, our, our goal is to uh, try to have the, the, uh, the same model as coaches versus uh, cancer. I just feel like Vicky V and ESPN has done a really good job with promoting uh, that event. Um, and, and I think it's a great uh, uh, template for us to take baby steps to grow our event the same way and to keep the narrative alive. Thanks, Daryl. And we also have a question from Andrew Kahn over at M Live. Yes, hello. I've got uh, got questions for for both coaches, but I'll, I'll start with Coach uh, Coach Smith. Um, and I want to ask about Jawan Howard. I mean, given what he's done, you know, Michigan won the Big Ten last year, went to the Elite Eight. And, you know, and the fact that he's at such a high profile school, like, what does his, his success mean to the to the black coaching community? Does it mean anything? You know, more special to you in particular? Um, it does. Um, you know, he is. Uh, a lot of, uh, let me start with saying there's a lot of guys that come from the NBA and they get into coaching and not to be negative. Um, I don't think that they really understand what it entails uh, to be a college a coach. Um, beside the X's and O's, there's so much more of a responsibility that you have in the NBA. I think it's just pretty much coaching, managing egos. I'm so impressed with Jawan Howard. Um, obviously, I followed him as a player um, and uh, was very impressed with you know, how he conducted himself and carried himself as a, as a player. I thought he was always an outstanding example of shining light on what professional athletes are supposed to be and how to conduct themselves. So I think he's always been, in my mind, in a position that he's led and a great example for, for people to say, to tell their young children, hey, that, that guy's got to figure it out, you know, follow, kind of follow his lead. But obviously he had a lot of success, you know, as an assistant coach there with the Miami Heat. But once again, a lot of NBA guys, when they cross the line and get into college, they don't have the success. So, I personally think that he's one, he's done one of the best coaching jobs in the country. Um, it's not my call to say that anyone's the best coach or who's the best or the worst, but I think Jamal Howard's done one of the best coaching jobs. And I want to be specific when I say that um, with his teams, the, the, the years that he's been at Michigan, they're always well prepared. They play so hard. They play together. Uh, so I'm, I'm a fan, first and foremost, of uh, the job that he's done in watching his teams play. Um, obviously going up against them, it's going to be a daunting task. Um, they've got one of the premier players in the country and Hunter Dickinson. I don't know what we're going to do to be able to, uh, guard him. Maybe coach Howard can, can come over and, and help us out a little bit with some post defense. Maybe he's got <laughs> some ideas for me. Um, but Juwan Howard is just, a, I mean, he's a, a shining star for all of us. I mean, obviously he's a little bit younger than I am, but, but someone I look up to, not only just in his stature and his size, but just uh, his character and what he's all about uh, as a man. And then, and let me say this in the end here too. Uh, I pay close attention to coaches and, you know, he's got a really, really good staff, got an experienced guy, Coach Martelli over there. But the thing that's really impressive is um, John Howard's coaching that team. 
I mean, he's coaching that team. I mean, I'm watching him during timeouts and drawing up plays and things like that. And he's coaching that team. Make no mistake about it. So I think he's done a phenomenal job. It's an honor for me to be on the other side, uh, on the sideline with him. I, I'm just hoping that we can get a one-on-one game in, in between the games and stuff like that because I, I don't know how the prayer you can match up against Michigan. But I think if he doesn't shoot, um, you know, shoots anything outside of 15 feet, I think I might have a chance to pull off the upset. <laughs> thank, thank you and then dude, for you Juwan I mean you're, you're relatively young you haven't been coaching for all that long yet but you know given your success there there are even younger or less experienced black coaches that are looking up to you I, you know I've talked to some of them already like do, do you see yourself as a mentor for those coaches well I'm very humble I, I would say in, in a lot of ways and you know and first of all thank you coach Smith uh, that means a lot um, coming from a guy uh, who've done it before. And uh, I know you've had an opportunity to witness a lot of coaches uh, on the sideline, uh, how they, you know, able to, you know, build their programs and the success they had with their programs. You know, one of the things that I always try to do is uh, just try to figure out ways to how to get better. And I'm all about the growth mindset. Um, and you never know who's watching you. And so with that being said, um, you know, the beauty of what I'm able to do is try to do whatever I can to help serve these young men, whether it's uh, in basketball or it's just in life in general, for them to be successful. So when we talk about being on the court, uh, you know, how do other coaches, uh, do I see, you know, younger guys look at me as an example? I, I really don't know. I'm just going to continue to do whatever I can to, you know, to help grow myself as well as help prepare my team. Um, and at the same time, I try to be one of the most competitive teams when we're out there competing. Um, this game is not easy. Uh, it's, a, it's a challenge, but it's more than just basketball. Uh, and I think Coach had just touched on it earlier that um, it's more than just, you know, the X's and O's. Um, and that's what I embraced. I embrace uh, just, you know, what has came with, you know, everything that's been a part of this uh and some would say a job, but I look at it as not a job. You know, this is something I love doing. And and it's just happened to be just part of what I always enjoyed. And that's the game of basketball. So everything that came with this, uh, as far as, you know, being a, a good teacher, uh, try to be a great example, but also be transparent while doing it. <laughs> you know, I've never done everything perfect every time. Uh, I still make mistakes as a, as a coach. Um, and I still want to try to see where I can to help improve. Uh, but uh, it, it's flattering to see that uh, other guys that look like me is getting the opportunity. Great. And um, Anthony, Amy, I see your hand up. And I just want to say, um, John, um, Coach Howard's time is tight. So if you want to direct questions to him, please do so. All right, thank you, Martin. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, my question is actually for both coaches, and you both have touched on it a little bit, but we all understand the business of basketball and, and what that entails, but how much do both of you uh, really enjoy and revel in the fact that you're educators, um, particularly for a weekend like this, for an event like this, uh, how much does being an educator mean to you in addition to your coaching duties? Well, I start first. Uh, one of the things that uh, I, I remember saying one time to uh, when I was assistant coach, you know, with the Miami Heat, that you know I'm not a teacher, and I never went to school for you know teaching. Uh, you know, my degree uh, was all about you know communication and you know uh, focus a little bit in business, and so uh, this in basketball. It's, it's so many teaching that's in, so much teaching that's involved. And then when you get to the college level, uh, you look that as an educator in a lot of ways, because everything you say and do, uh, your players really pays attention. And with that, uh, not only just you, but they also pays attention to your staff. So when it comes to picking a staff, um, as well as myself, we try to represent uh, what we're all about um, as far as what we've learned growing up from our parents, uh, to be able to share some of the knowledge that we've learned from either our coaches as well as our teachers and parents on what we can do to uh, to be great examples and send the right message to our young 
our young uh, youthful student athletes. And with that, um, I'm embracing it, uh, but I also will continue to keep educating myself to be able to keep feeding knowledge to others. Yeah, to uh, piggyback off of uh, Coach Howard, um, yeah, we, you know, we, we're, we're in a position of, uh, of influence and impact. I, I come from a family of educators. All, everyone in my family pretty much were teachers or principals, grandmother, my mom. Uh, so, you know, it was introduced to me at a young age. And I think the, um, the best way you can teach is, uh, is to you, for you to be a good example, uh, you know, in terms of doing things the right way. Uh, working hard. You know, one of the things I do, um, I'm a bit of a workout fanatic. I always like for my players to see uh, me. I set the example, um, you know, being very energetic, um, always, like I say, exercising, uh, every now and again, getting up a few uh, three-point shots, uh, getting a little sweaty out there with my guys. Um, because, you know, that, but I do think that, you know, we, we are, I am a teacher, um, you know, especially with, you know, how, you know, with recruiting and things like that, you know, I'm not, not the biggest, uh, you know, fan of, uh, you know, some of the uh, basketball environments that uh, some of our kids in this area come out of. So they, they come into our program um, and they're just athletic. I mean, the skill level is not where it needs to be. So we spend, our staff spends, spends a lot of time on teaching uh, things out on the court, uh, but also off the court, you know, preparation, uh, you know, how to get ready. One of the hardest things we have to deal with here is, practice, getting guys to practice, uh, because obviously with high school, it's not a lot of time for that. AAU, it's not a lot of time for practice and things like that. So that's the biggest adjustment for kids coming in here um, is, is, is being able to go through a two, two and a half hour, three hour practice, sometimes three and a half hour practice. So you're, you're constantly teaching uh, habits, building habits and, and things of that nature. So um, I think we are to an extent teachers. Uh, Great. And Chris, Gardner. Thank you very much. This is a question for Coach Smith. Coach, what message are you giving to your players about the significance of participating in this event? I mean, obviously, uh, you know, our, our kids are very smart. We have, we have a little bit of an older team. Uh, they pay attention. They watch uh, the news. I mean, they know what's going on. I mean, they know what's going on. And, uh, you know, out in the out in the communities, in the streets, uh, in terms of uh, you know, racial profiling, uh, you know, some you know, mistreatment, the whole George Floyd thing. So my biggest thing to them is just to be aware, be aware of your surroundings, uh, to continue to pay attention, um, to not to be in a situation where uh, you're going to put yourself or your teammates uh, in harm's way. Uh, my image, uh, traveling, you know, four or five guys in a car, uh, hoodies, things like that. All these things, I think, that have caused problems in our society in terms of uh, being profiled, uh, we just talked to them about that and to, uh, you know, continue to, um, you know, be an agent for change to make sure that you are doing the right things, uh, living the right way, being respectful uh, to an officer. If, if, if that's something that, that, that becomes a, an issue, you get pulled over, random traffic stop to be respectful. Uh, but just, just to know that these are some very uh, serious and some dangerous times, uh, but to continue to do the best that you can and be on your best behavior at all times. Great. And I think Stephen Gaither had a question previously, or Stephen, are you all set? Or Yes, I'm, I am. Uh, hey, hey guys, how are you doing? This is uh, for Coach Howard, uh, and then I'll have a follow-up for Coach Smith. Uh, Coach Howard, um, you know, you're going against uh, a Prairie View A&M, which is a historically black college. Um, you know, playing at that Big Ten Power Five level, you don't really get a chance to play those colleges a lot. But um, can you just talk about, um, you know, any influences that you may have had that have come from HBCUs? I know uh, I talked to Tubby Smith and he talked about some older guys like Big House Gaines and folks like that who influenced him. Uh, but if you had any influences or connections to HBCUs, um, you know, in the basketball world? Well, um, you know, a lot of the... Um... My mentors back in my neighborhood, you know, some of them have uh, came from the uh, HBCUs, uh, as well as some of my friends in the, in the neighborhood as well. Um, but I, I remember, like last season, you know, we played against you know, Texas Southern in the uh, in the tournament, and um, <laughs> trust me, I, I did not go into that game thinking that was going to be an easy cakewalk. Uh, looking at the film and and watching them throughout the season. Uh, they were a team that was well coached, uh, that play hard from start to finish. Um, also, uh, a very competitive group. 
Uh, they didn't look at a Power Five conference and look and, and say, uh, you know what, uh, we fear them. So that's the same exact thing that I expect when we play a uh, Prairie View A and M. Uh, they're going to be well coached, prepared, um, and, and th they're not going to sit down and just lay down on, on because we're the Big Ten and we wanted to, you know, power conferences uh, in the country. So our mindset going into that game, we're knowing that you know it's going to be a, a fun atmosphere, a very competitive game, but we we give respect uh, where respect is due. Uh, we never take any uh, opponent lightly, and nor you know last I checked, we didn't win the NCAA championship last year. <laughs> so uh, no entitlement on our end. Um, and like I, like I touched on before, uh, you know, this is going to be a very competitive game from a well-coached, balanced team. And what? then for Coach, and then for Coach Smith, uh, for you guys to play a Big Ten team on a, in a neutral court, a neutral setting um, in Washington D.C., uh, how big is that for you guys coming out of the swag, being uh, one of the top programs there? And like uh, Coach Howard just said, you know, you know, your neighbors down the road played them tough. Just talk about, uh, just talk about uh, what that means for your program. Um, it's great. We always look for the challenge. We, we want to try to play the best just to get a gauge as to where we are. Um, you know, and, and you know, obviously it's uh, we got a very tough, very competitive schedule. But I think Michigan is probably the tops of our schedule. But you know, for us, our, our focus when we're playing against these big schools is not always about who we're playing as much as it is how we're playing and how we're going to play. Um, but like I say, it'd be a daunting uh, task. Uh, I'd like to um, pick Coach Howard's brain, you know, and obviously maybe get an opportunity to talk to him. It'd be an honor to be able to do that just to kind of get some, because he runs some really good stuff offensively, you know, and I'm, 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 I'm a young coach, uh, not necessarily in age, but just in terms of years on the job. Um, so that, that, that'll be something to be exciting for me to get an opportunity maybe to speak with him. But just for our players to be able to go up against some of the best athletes in the country, because he's done an unbelievable job in recruiting. Um, but, but we'll be up for the task. Uh, we'll be coming off of uh, two tough games already on the West Coast, so we'll be coming over there, so we'll have a couple games under our belt. Uh, but we're looking forward to it uh, in the nation's capital. Uh, to be fun. Coach may have a little bit of an advantage there playing for the Bullets back in the day, but uh, hopefully his team won't have shot in the, some of the places that he shot when he was there playing with the Bullets. But we're excited about it. It should be fun. And um, like I say, just, uh, you know, the countdown is on. You know, we'll be here in a few weeks. I look forward to it. Wonderful. And Cardell Dudley had some questions, and then we'll have to let coaches go. We're coming up on time. So, Cardell, if you could ask your question first to Coach Howard. Yes, uh, let me see. Coach, uh, thanks for taking my time. Uh, you obviously have uh, recruited locally. You know, you have some some of my top prospects that came out there high school wise, and also you play here. Just talk about how big of it how big this game will be just having a homecoming, especially with you guys not being able to come here to play Maryland with Maryland coming to play you guys in Ann Arbor. Just talk about how it is to have those guys be able to come back and, you know, look to put on a show in front of their home crowd. Well, it's beautiful to get an opportunity to come back to the nation's capital. Um, you know, I consider, you know, that city is one of the cities that adopted me. Um, like the coach touched on earlier, uh, I got my first, um, NBA shot at playing for the Washington Bullets. And then uh, we moved on, became the Washington Wizards. So I was there for uh, almost seven years. So I'm very familiar with the area. I'm also familiar with the, the young talent that has came through that city uh, before me, uh, after me, and now currently. And so when Hunter Dickinson, as well as Terrence Williams uh, was, was playing for, one was playing for Gonzaga, the other one playing for DeMather, had a chance to see some of their games and felt that they fit, you know, our culture. Uh, and then now, currently, as they are on the team and just watching their growth, it's been beautiful. And I've learned a lot from them, too. So I think it's it's great that they get an opportunity to come back home, uh, to play uh, uh, in front of their families and friends. Uh, but most importantly, I think it's, it's great for the entire team to get a chance to come back to D.C. and uh, – and while we're there, you know, we're going to take time out of our schedule and go visit the National Museum of African-American History uh, just so our guys can, you know, we talk about educating and teaching uh, just so they get a chance to see, you know, some of the, uh, the beautiful history of, um, of what has been before us and, and those that are currently and what they're doing as far as the impact they're having on not just the, on the, um, the African-American uh the community, but also people in life in general. So 
um, it's going to be a, you know, not only a competitive game, but it's going to be a, a, a educational trip for for all of us, and we're looking forward to it. Thank you, Coach. Coach Howard, I know you have to go, and you had a hard stop. Uh, can you stay for one more question, or should we let you go? I mean, you put me on the spot. Of course, I'm gonna stay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You think I'm gonna say no. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we had um, any final questions for Coach Howard? John, did you have a question? I do, but I'm expecting a phone call any moment, so I don't want to be the guy who asks a question and then has to leave. And he's been more than generous, so I'm fine. Okay, wonderful. All right, thanks, John. And Cardell, please continue. Coach Howard, thank you for staying. And um, Cardell, I believe you had a question for Coach Smith as well as one for Daryl Woods as well. Yes, uh, I'm going to get to Coach first, Coach Smith. Uh, you know, just talk about why this game is so huge for not just for your program, but the SWAT conference as a whole and minority coaches all over the country, every division of college basketball, especially coming off of last season where a number of games against, you know, high majors were, were canceled due to, you know, the pandemic and COVID. I mean, it's, uh, again, it's a big game for our program because we, you know, we, we prepare um, every game. I mean, obviously, as Coach Pete, you know, every game is an important game. Uh, but obviously, with you know, it, it being Michigan, uh, not so much the, the Big Ten, because I think they've kind of separated themselves uh, from a lot of programs. I think they're the best program in the Big Ten over the last couple of years. So uh, but just the, the quality of players that they have is big for our kids uh, every year. You know, you, you want to give them an opportunity, uh, you know, to compete against, uh, you know, young men that have been recognized as some of the best players at their positions in the country. Uh, but also for, for us, it's, it's a teaching point. At, uh, and again, I, they, they've got great players, very good players. Um, you know, a lot of repick from last year. You know, guys are all over the NBA rosters. And then Coach Howard's done a great job in developing those guys and mentally and physically for the next level. Um, but I, I'm pretty sure there's probably some guys that are probably there that uh, are probably not much different uh, than some of our guys. But for whatever reason, um, we'll get a lot of transfers. But it, it, it could have been just, uh, you know, the luck of the draw that, uh, that that young man went to Michigan and this young man came to Prairie View. So uh, for us, just to, to, for our guys to be able to compete um, against guys that, that, that have a big name on the front uh, of their shirt, but maybe not a lot of difference in, in, in talent, um, you know, outside of the, the top five, six, seven or eight players in his rotation. Uh, so from that end, uh, I think it's good for our guys to get to compete uh, again, for me personally, as I touched on earlier, an opportunity to compete against someone that I feel has done the best coaching job in the country in the last few years in the short time he's been at Michigan. So it's big uh, for me personally as a coach, and I can continue to learn and grow uh, by watching him and maybe having an opportunity to speak with him a little bit. Uh, and just for our institution, you know, being at HBCU, uh, obviously uh, there's a big push you know, with social justice and things like that. So us being having a platform to be able to continue the conversation and be a representative of a historically black college uh, and university. Um, and again, as Coach Howard said, it's not just all African-Americans here. I mean, we have a lot of different, uh, you know, nationalities here, but I just think just being, um, you know, in a, in a position to uh, you know, have, a, have a place at the table uh, and represent the great game of basketball and, and help Prairie View at the same time. Uh, I think it's huge. Thank you. And um, last question for Daryl Woods. I think, Cardell, you had one last question, and then we'll wrap up. Oh, no, he answered it um, at the beginning, just talking about the events that led up to the formation of the, of the uh, showcase. So uh, he already answered it. Okay, wonderful. And Daryl, um, before we wrap up, is there anything else that you'd like to mention to the to the reporters about the game? Uh, no, I think the game itself, uh, the coaches did a pretty good job with explaining why they're in, involved in, in the game. Um, uh, for us at CVR, while the game is, is the, the platform, uh, there's other things like coach uh, Howard just mentioned about the uh, educational tour, which uh, both teams will participate in. We also have a uh, uh, a panel discussion with uh, some dignitaries like John Carlos, 
uh, Ethan Thomas just from the, the area uh, uh, and things like that, a VIP reception, um, you know, uh, that's centered around uh, the game. Uh, and that allows us also to do, you know, uh, again, while the game is is the uh, platform and the, and the vocal point, there's some educational things that uh, will we'll, uh, line up uh, to center a around that um, a little bit. Um, so, but again, thank everybody for, you know, thanks everybody for covering uh, the uh, inaugural event. Uh, thanks to the coaches for participating. Um, and then thank you, Martin, for putting this uh, together for us. Wonderful. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for participating. The game is going to be held at ESA Stadium in Washington, D.C. on November 13th. Um, tip off 8 o'clock. Game will be broadcast live on the Big Ten Network. We'll be sending you more information regarding the panel and the dignitaries who are part of that panel discussion. And as Daryl said, thank you, everyone, for joining. And we look forward to having you at the game. And please feel free to reach out to us with any questions you might have. We will be setting up interviews post-conference. So do contact either Katrina or myself to set up interviews. So again, thanks, everyone. Good seeing you. And have a great day. OK.